Hello old friends and those new to me, welcome to my channel. My name's King Noosme. I can't take credit for that, my girlfriend wrote that for me. It's hard making rhymes, man. So a few weeks ago, I asked you guys what new show you guys would like to see me talk about. Very controversial question. I did not know it would be that controversial. And you guys voted for Courage the Cowardly Dog. Not very surprised, honestly. And I know most of you guys are aware of or watched Courage the Cowardly Dog as it aired on television, but I'm going to explain it anyways like you're a baby. You see, uh, Courage was abandoned as a puppy until he was found by an old lady named Muriel, who lives in the middle of nowhere with her husband, Eustace bag. But creepy stuff happens in nowhere, and it's up to Courage to save the day. Yeah, if you're a fan of the show, you'll know that I almost copied the intro word for word. It's a pretty good intro. Like, we gotta talk about how excellent that intro is. It literally catches you up on everything that's happening in less than a paragraph. That's genius. On a more serious note, Courage the Cowardly Dog is a comedy horror show that aired on Cartoon Network for four seasons from 1999 to 2002. Most episodes are split into two 10-minute segments, with each segment being a different story. And a little more background information for those who are interested. Courage the Cowardly Dog was originally a short called Courage the Cowardly Dog in The Chicken from Outer Space on a show called What the Cartoon. What the Cartoon was an anthology show that was used as secret pilots for shows, and it helped a bunch of shows get recognized. Shows like Courage, Dexter's Lab, Johnny Bravo, The Powerpuff Girls. And you can actually watch the whole seven minute segment of the original Courage pilot on YouTube. And it's actually really cool to see how little it changed from the pilot. And despite his name being Courage, the dog is scared of literally everything. And it doesn't help that paranormal creatures seem to be drawn to him, and they just torment the poor little guy and his family. For many people, this show was their introduction into the horror genre. If you ask anybody if they remember the show, they'll probably say, oh my god, that scared me so bad. That's usually what you get. Then they'll probably mention episodes like Return the Slab, the You're Not Perfect scene, those weird ass rat things, the mask episode, the whole thing, honestly, the weird floating human head. But most of the time they mention Freaky Fred, which is probably why he won the poll. This show had a unique way of mixing 2D animation and CGI and some sometimes live action, to make the world feel more ethereal and to make things seem more paranormal and out of place. Most of the time, the CGI characters are the monsters we see, and most of the time, they're the scariest ones. The show would also tackle a lot of serious subjects like acceptance, anxiety, love, abuse, and in this episode, it's obsession and serial killers. But that's enough talking about the show, let's get into the episode. Freaky Fred is the fourth episode of the first season, and it's the second half to another pretty popular current story called The Demon and the Mattress. The main antagonist Antagonist Fred is one of the scariest villains in the show, despite him being just a normal dude that happens to look a little creepy. And it's also known as one of the most memorable episodes of the whole series. And you guys seem pretty excited to see me talk about it, so let's quit yapping and get into it. We start the episode by meeting Fred, and he's on the bus in the middle of nowhere going to visit his Aunt Muriel. And she's pretty excited to see him too. I can't wait for that wee lad Fred to arrive. Too bad Eustace isn't as excited. That freak's not setting one freaky foot in this house. Fred is quite the strange dude. Throughout the whole episode, we hear his thoughts, and the dude thinks in rhymes. The story I'm about to tell, I tell you I will tell it well, is of my dear Aunt Muriel. That's crazy. That's insane behavior already. I had to go ask my girlfriend to make a rhyme for me because I couldn't make one because I'm stupid. Before Fred gets there, Eustace puts a massive lock on the bathroom door because Fred is a barber, but he's not a normal barber. The freak's a barber. A freaky barber. He is indeed the freak freakiest barber. Not in that way. And he's somewhat obsessed with the word naughty. Maybe it is in that way. Finally, Fred gets to the house, and before Muriel opens the door, Courage starts imagining all these crazy creatures that he could be. But on the other side of the door, it's holiday. Just a dude. Despite him being just a regular guy and not some unfathomable creature like a whole ass foot, Courage is still quite terrified of him. Okay, yeah, I see why he's creepy. Eustace isn't finished installing his lock, and he has to run to the hardware store to grab a tool real quick, and warns everybody to not shut the door, because once it's shut, it's locked, and it's not coming back open. Then gives Fred a nice warm welcome. Say hello to Fred. Yeah, I don't think Eustace likes him too much. Muriel asks Courage to show Fred the bathroom so he can freshen up a little bit because it's been a long journey out here, which he reluctantly agrees to do. Okay, I'll do it but I won't like it. While he's up there, Eustace gives him some clean towels to give to Fred. Then, as a joke, Eustace <laughs> locks him in the room with him. Eustace uses this as his chance to finally leave to go get the tool he needs at the expense of his dog's mental state. And it doesn't take long for Fred to start talking about how much he likes Courage's fur and how he wants to be a little naughty. 
But before he does anything too crazy, he decides to tell Courage a story. The story of how he found out he loved hair. And as he covers Courage in a shower curtain, he talks about his first ever pet. He got a cute little hamster that was covered in pink fur, kind of like Courage. He says the fur kind of hypnotized him and made him feel a lot of joy then. That's when I got... Yep, he shaved his cute little hamster. For no reason. You'd think he'd want to keep the fur on the hamster since he liked it so much, but I guess not. And as he tells this story, he holds Courage down and prepares to give him a new hairdo. Oh lord, hopefully Eustace is close to the hardware store so they can finally get this door open. Guess not. We cut back to Courage and Fred locked in the bathroom and we see Courage got a cool new- Oh my god, what did he do to him? Actually- the Mohawk's pretty sick. Fred decides to share another story with Courage as he shaves him. This time he tells the story of how an actual human fell victim to his weird kink. And what makes it worse was she was his girlfriend. Good lord, she does have a head full of hair. Her name is Barbara and I think I know why they're not together anymore. I realized she... needed space. But that's not what makes this part creepy. As he tells this story, he shaves Courage, and Courage is too terrified to move. So he just lets it happen as these girls sing a happy tune in the background. And after he finishes telling his story about Barbara, Fred tells the biggest lie ever. I never more was naughty. Yeah, right. Courage is half the dog he used to be. Or he has half the fur, at least. Man, where is Eustace with this tool? They've been locked in the bathroom for like 10 minutes. Seriously. Meanwhile, Muriel brings them some pancakes so they don't starve to death. I just thought that was nice. And Fred literally force feeds Courage the pancakes as he tells him one last story. This time he was a little naughty at work. A Lorax looking fellow comes into his barber shop and asks for just a trim. And let's just say, to bank, it beckoned. I bow. it's old. So Fred took a little too much off the top. Since it seems like Eustace isn't gonna be back anytime soon. Courage decides to take matters into his own hands. Throughout the episode, we are shown this bracelet that's on Fred that says it's a home for freaky barbers. Wow, that's quite specific. It has a phone number on it for Courage to call if Fred's being a little naughty. Listen, he says it about 10,000 times in the episode. You gotta hear it too. Courage pulls out a phone and starts calling the number on the bracelet. Wait, he had a phone? Call 911, a locksmith. Call Eustace. Or don't call Eustace. He probably wouldn't pick up or know how to work a phone. Before he could shave Courage's tail, which he promised he wouldn't do. Sweet pooch, afraid I'll shave your tail? Why now? That would be weird. <laughs> okay, sure. The freaky barber people come break down the door and take Fred with them in a straitjacket where he belongs. And Muriel seems to think it was a decent visit. What a lovely visit. Can she not see her shaved dog three feet away from her? And before we leave, we see that Fred left Courage a nice little note on his back. With love, Fred. I mean, I guess that's kind of sweet, but you really should ask before you just start shaving people. Well, I guess if he did that, he wouldn't be naughty. And that's the end of the episode. And I know as an adult, the show is very goofy, not scary at all. But as a kid, the creepy smile, fast paced editing, little girls singing, the sound of the clippers, the helplessness you feel for courage and that goddamn smile, it's so creepy. This really makes a terrifying episode. And I would know because it scared me a lot as a kid. As an adult, I think Fred is supposed to be a metaphor for a serial killer, maybe? That's the kind of vibes it gave off to me. He started off by shaving his pet hamster, and most serial killers, they start off by killing small animals just to get the thrill. That's a pretty well-known fact. Then he moved on to somebody he knew, his girlfriend, which serial killers kind of do as well. Then he started killing... Whoa, <laughs> he started shaving. And then he moved on to the poor cowboy dude that just wanted to trim, all because he wanted to be a little... Naughty. I had to throw one last one in there for you. So it, it kind of makes sense that he had the evolution of a serial killer. That's what I'm thinking. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Fred himself is an obvious reference to Sweeney Todd. For those who don't know what Sweeney Todd is, go watch Sweeney Todd. It's awesome. Sweeney Todd is a revenge story about a barber that uses his job as a disguise to kill people. He lures people in with the promise of a haircut just to slit their throat and give their body to the meat pie store downstairs. Yeah, they uh, grind up the bodies and use them in meat pies. It's a pretty brutal story. Really, go watch Sweeney Todd. It's awesome. I love it so much. Let me know what you think about Courage a Cowardly Dog in the comments below. Also, let me know any other stories you want to see me talk about. I have a Patreon. The $5 members get episodes a day early, plus some bonus content and maybe some pictures of my cats. Also, your name right here.
Whoa, look at those. Like the video if you like the video. Thank you for watching the video all the way through. I appreciate you all and peace. <laughs>